Welcome. Welcome to my imagination. Come freely, go safely. But please, leave behind some of the happiness you bring. For this, my friends, is the story of Dracula. My Dracula. This is where it all began, here in Whitby. Who would have thought this charming Yorkshire town would bring me face to face with the name of Dracula? But then again, where else could such a tale begin? Look, look out beyond the harbour and see the gothic splendour of the ancient abbey, a most noble ruin of immense size and beauty. The supernatural has always obsessed me, and above all, the myth of the vampire. In fact, by the time I first came to Whitby, I had already commenced a novel of my own, Count Vampire. Then, by chance, while perusing the local library, I found a most unusual book, entitled An Account of the Principalities of Wallachia and Moldovia by one William Wilkinson. This intriguing volume contained a curious story, the history of one Vovoid Dracula, son of the dragon. He was a medieval Transylvanian prince, and what a prince. Poet, scholar, statesman, soldier, and mass murderer. He fought the Saxons, he fought the Russians, and above all, he fought the Turk, impaling his victims on wooden stakes by the thousands. A crazed dragon prince with a bloodlust from hell. Oh, how perfect for a terrible tale. And so, amongst the English charm of Whitby, Count Dracula was born. Dracula became my vampire hero, a shape-changing creature who could turn at will from primeval warrior to 19th century aristocrat, a suave, foreign predator who embodied the dark contrasts of human nature, cultured, yet primitive, refined, yet destructive, sensual, yet tyrannical. A character ripe for the stage, as well as the novel. And my model for this new count? None other than my noble friend and mentor, Henry Irving, the greatest actor of his age. The standard, I think, for all portrayals of my Dracula. Yes, my Dracula. At once the vision came to me. Dracula would invade England, landing here at Whitby. I saw the great clouds massing over the grey north seascape, a mighty storm and finally a shipwreck. I imagined more. A mysterious black hound comes ashore, wreaking havoc on the town. Then I saw the tall, dark figure of the Count walking among the tombs of the churchyard and there recruiting his first disciple, an innocent girl of porcelain beauty who would fall at once beneath his spell and be turned into a vile, lusting vampire herself. And so my story began. This is the 1890s, my friends. A new time a precise time. Yet in this brave new world of man and his machines, 
we battle the forces of the past, a dark, living past surrounding us. Dracula is that past, my present, and our future. <laughs>